पीक ऑफ एलेक्वेंस नाजोल बलागा सरमन्स लेटर्स एंड सेंग्स ऑफ इमाम अली इब्न अबी तालिब लेटर थर्टी वन इन कंटिन्यूएशन एडवाइज पीपल टू डू गुड एंड टू लिव वर्चुअसली बिकॉज यू आर फिट टू गिव सच एडवाइज लेट योर वर्ड्स एंड डीड्स टीच द वर्ल्ड लेसन्स ऑफ हाउ टू एबस्टेन फ्रॉम विकेडनेस एंड विशियस डीड्स ट्राई योर बेस्ट टू कीप अवे फ्रॉम दोज हु इंडल्ज इन वॉइसिस एंड सीन्स फाइट वेन एवर रिक्वायर टू डिफेंड द कॉज ऑफ अल्लाह वेन यू थिंक ऑफ डिफेंडिंग द कॉज ऑफ अल्लाह डो नॉट बी अफ्रेड दैट पीपल विल लाफ एट यू सेंसर योर एक्शन और स्लेंडर यू fearlessly and boldly help truth and justice bear patiently the sufferings and face bravely the obstacles which come in your way when you follow truth and when you try to uphold it adhere to the cause of truth and justice whenever you find it try to be well versed in islamic jurisprudence and theology and acquire a thorough knowledge of the canons of this religion develop the habit of patience against sufferings calamities and adversities this virtue of patience is one of the highest values of morality and nobility of character and it is the best habit which one can develop trust in allah and let your mind seek his protection in every calamity and suffering because you will thus entrust yourself and your affairs to the best trustee and to the mightiest guardian do not seek help and protection of anybody but allah reserve your prayers your request your solicitations your supplications and your entreaties to him and him alone because to grant to give to confer and to bestow as well as to withhold to deprive to refuse and to debar lies only in, in his power ask as much of his blessings and seek as much of his guidance as you can try to understand my exhortations ponder over them deeply do not take them lightly and do not turn away from them because the best knowledge is that which benefits the listener the knowledge which does not benefit anybody is useless not valuable and not worth learning and remembering my dear son when i realized that i was getting old and when i felt that weakness and feebleness are gradually creeping into me then i hasten to advise you as to the best ways of leading a noble virtuous and useful life i hated the idea that death should overtake me before i tell you all that i wanted to tell or before my mental capacities like my bodily strength are weakened i convey all this knowledge to you lest inordinate desires temptations and inducements should start influencing you or adverse changes of times and circumstances should drag your name in the mire or i should leave you like an untrained colt because young and fresh mind is like a virgin soil which allow things sown in it to grow verdantly and to bear luxuriantly then i have made use of early opportunities to educate and train you before your mind loses its freshness before it gets hardened or warped before you start facing life unprepared for the encounter and before you are forced to use these seasons and discretions without gaining advantages of accumulated traditions collected knowledge and experiences of others these words of advice and counsels that i give you will save you from the worry of acquiring knowledge gathering experiences and soliciting advice from others now you can very easily make use of all the knowledge which men have to acquire with great care trouble and patience things which were hidden from them and which only experiments experiences and sufferings could bring to light are now made easily available to you through his exhortations my dear son though the span of my life is not as large as that of some pe- other people who have passed away before me yet i took great care to study their lives assiduously i went through their activities i contemplated over their deliberations and deeds I studied their remains, relics, and ruins. I pondered over their lives so deeply that I felt as if I have lived and worked with them from early ages of history down to over times, and I know what did them good and what brought harm to them. Shifting the good from bad, I am concentrating with these pages and for your good the knowledge that I so gathered. 
Through these pieces of advice, I have tried to bring home to you the value of honest living and high thinking and the dangers of a vicious and sinful life. I have taken care to cover and guard every aspect of your life as it is the duty of a kind, considerate and loving father. From the very beginning, I took care to help you to develop a noble character and to fit you for the life which you will have to lead. to let you grow up to be a young man with a noble character an open and honest mind and clear and precise knowledge of things around you originally my desire was only to teach you the holy book thoroughly and to make you understand its intricacies to impart to you the complete knowledge of his commandments and interdictions and not to leave you at the mercy of the knowledge of other people but after having succeeded in this task i felt nervous that i may leave you untrained and uneducated in the subjects which themselves are subject to such confusion and so many contradictions these are the subjects whose confusions have been made worse confo- confounded by selfish desires warped minds wicked ways of life and sinful modes of thinking therefore i have noted down in these lines the basic principles of nobility piety truth and justice you may feel them to be overbearing and harsh but my desire is to equip you with this knowledge instead of leaving you unarmed to face the world where there is every danger of loss and damnation as you are a noble virtuous and pious young man i am sure you will receive divine guidance and succor I am sure he will help you to achieve your aim in life. I want you to promise to yourself to follow my advice carefully. Remember my son, the best out of these pieces of advice of mine are those which tell you to fear Allah, to concentrate and to confine yourself to the performance of those duties which have been made incumbent upon you by him and to follow in the footsteps of your ancestors. The holy holy prophet and Imam Ali in your pious and virtuous relationship verily they always carefully measured their thoughts and deeds as you must also try to do and they carefully thought over the subject or before saying anything about it or before doing a deed you should also follow the same this kind of deliberation made them take from life what was really the best and forsake that which was not made incumbent upon them or which was not the best if your mind refuses to accept my advice and you persist to try your own experiments like them then you are at liberty to arrive at your conclusions but only after thoroughly studying the subject and after acquiring the knowledge necessary for such decisions you must not allow uncertainties and doubts poison your mind skepticism or irrational likes and dislikes should not affect your views but remember that before you start thinking and deliberating over a problem seek guidance of the lord and beseech him to give you a lead in the di- right direction avoid confusion in your ideas and do not let disbelief take hold of your mind because the first will lead you towards agnosticism and the other towards errors and sins when you are thus prepared to solve any problem and you are sure that you possess a clear mind a sincere and firm desire to reach the truth to say the correct thing and to do the correct deed then carefully go through the advice that i am leaving for you if your mind is not clear and it is not as free from doubts as you wish it to be then you will be wandering in the wilderness of uncertainties and errors like a camel suffering from night blindness under these circumstances it is best for you to give up the quest because which with such limitations none can ever reach the truth my dear son carefully and very carefully remember these sayings of mine the lord who is master of death is also the master of life the creator is the enhi later and the one who enhili and he lets have the power to bring everything back again to existence the one who sends calamities has also the power to protect you from them remember that this world is working under the laws ordained by him and it consists of assemblage and aggressions 
of actions and reactions, causes and effects, calamities and reverses, pains and suffering, pleasures and rewards and punishments. But this is not all which the picture depicts. There are things in it which are beyond our ken, things which we do not and cannot know and things which cannot be foreseen and foretold, for instance the rewards and punishments of the day of judgment. Under these circumstances, if you do not understand a thing, do not reject it. Remember that your lack of understanding is due to insufficiency of your knowledge. Remember that when you came into this world, your first appearance was that of an ignorant, uneducated and unlearned being. Then you gradually acquired knowledge. But there are several things which were beyond your knowledge, which perplexed and surprised you and about which you did not understand. Gradually you acquired knowledge about some of those subjects and in future your knowledge and vision may further expand. Therefore the best thing for you to do is to seek guidance of one who has created you, who maintains and nourishes you, who has given a balanced mind and a normally working body. Your invocation should be reserved for him only. Your request and solicitation should be alone to him and you should only be afraid of him. To be continued in the next clip. Thank you.